welcome to our XConnect series on using the XConnect API. My name is Jason St. Cyr, and today we're going to look at creating and retrieving contacts using the XConnect API. Let's start by defining XConnect. XConnect is that layer that you're going to use to interact with experience data in XDB. This will make things a lot easier for you than if you were doing direct queries against the data store. Let's take a look at a common example for connecting to XConnect. When we want to send data at XDB or retrieve it, there's a few layers we've got to go through. So in this example, a customer has built a mobile app and they want to integrate this with Sitecore. This application needs to be able to send information about a customer for storage in XDB. When you use the app, the data is going to be tracked by some custom API that's been built and then it's going to get sent to an intermediary service. This intermediary service is completely built by the customer. It's not provided by Sitecore, but this is going to be where you do your custom integration logic. Now, that intermediary server is configured as a trusted client. That means that XConnect is going to allow it to send and receive contact and interaction data. XConnect then, in turn, relays these requests over to the XDB data store and then responds back to the calling application. A note on security, you can't submit the request directly from the mobile phone to XConnect. This is a security limitation, not a technology limitation. XConnect enforces security best practices by requiring certificate authentication by the calling application. We're gonna look at a quick demo of creating a contact in XDB using the XConnect API. In order for our code to work, there are five key things that we need to make sure we have. First. We need a client configuration. This configuration is going to allow us to instantiate the client communications. It'll have the appropriate certificate authentication and the destination URLs for the XConnect endpoints. Next, we need a contact identifier. This is going to allow us to identify what we want to create. Now, in today's demo, we're going to use a Twitter ID to identify the contact in XDB. Now, the contact definition is the actual object that's going to contain all the data that we're going to send across the wire. We'll start this off with an identifier and then add personal information for things like names and birth dates. And finally, we need a client. We'll use everything else we've built up to configure the client and send the data. Now, let's see it in action. What we have here is a simple console program. It makes requests to the XConnect API. At the end of the video, you'll get a link to the GitHub repository so you can dig into the code yourself. This program does a few simple things. It sets up a client configuration. It validates the configuration. It creates a contact and then gets that created contact from the database. We'll see more about getting a contact from XDB in a moment, but right now we're going to focus in on the code for setting up the client configuration and creating the contact. First, let's look at the example of creating the client configuration. In this code, we configure the certificate that will be used, as well as set up some timeout modifiers. We also need to configure the endpoints for the collection, search, and configuration clients. Finally, we put everything together to create a configuration object. This will be used to instantiate all our API clients before we make a call to XConnect. Now, let's look at using that configuration to create a contact. In this example, First, you'll see the initialization of the identifier and basic contact information. This is the data we want to send to XConnect to store in XDB. Next, you'll see the logic to instantiate the client with our required configuration. This will make sure our calls get authenticated and connect to the right endpoint. Now we start interacting with the client. We take the client information and we make sure the personal information is added to the contact. We then tell the client we want to execute an add contact operation. With the setup done, it's time to invoke the client. We submit the request and wait for a response. It's as simple as that. Once the data comes back, we can read the results of the call and determine if things went well. In this example, we output the results to the console. Now we're going to look at a quick demo of how to retrieve a contact from XDB using the XConnect API. Some of the things we need are similar to when we create a contact, such as the client configuration and the client instance. There are two elements that are different. First, 
Instead of building up a contact object with identifiers and personal information, instead we need to create a lookup identifier. This will be the contact we're requesting. In today's demo, we're going to use the same Twitter ID that we used to create a contact to go then and locate and retrieve that contact from XDB. Next, we need to specify our data retrieval options. If we want to get additional FAST information like names and birth dates, or maybe interactions the contact has made, we need to configure this for the request so that the data is extracted out of the database. Now let's get back to the demo. We're returning back to our console program, which makes connections to the XConnect API. We've already seen how to configure the client to create a contact, and now we're gonna focus on retrieving that contact. The sample method here is an example of opening a connection to XConnect and getting the contact data back with a specific identifier. First, you're gonna see the logic to instantiate the client with the required configuration, just like when we created a contact. This will make sure the calls get authenticated and connect to the right endpoint. Next, you see the logic for building up the initial contact objects. First, we wanna build up a reference, which will use the Twitter identifier as the lookup key. Then, we start building out the options of what we want returned. We request the personal information, things like names and birth dates, and then we can optionally add a date range query for interactions. With the query config ready, it's time to call the client. We pass in this reference identifier and the options of what we want to return, and then we make the query to the client. Once the data comes back, we can read it from the object and execute our integration logic. In this example, we output data to the console. You can download all the code you saw today and more from the XConnect tutorial GitHub repository. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.